top stories this hour. Public protector Tulima Donzela lashes out at Education Minister Angie Motseha for the late delivery of books to the Eastern Cape schools last year and this year. ESCOM CEO Brian Thomas has resigned from his position. And in sport, Russian marathon runner Natalia Volgina has been stripped off her old mutual two oceans title after she tested positive for banned substances. A very good afternoon and welcome to PM News. In our top story this hour, Public Protector Tulima Donzela has absolved Education Minister Angie Motsecha for the late delivery of books to the Eastern Cape schools last year and this year. But she has blamed the Director General Bobby Subrian and the Eastern Cape Head of Education Department. Addressing the media in Pretoria, Madonzela found them guilty of maladministration and prejudice against the learners who had to learn without books. She also released a scathing report against former communications minister Minister Dina Pule over the ICT in Daba and her relationship with Posani Mkodisa. With the controversial ICT in Daba. Well, government says its inter-ministerial task team will release a report on the Ngandla upgrades. Cabinet has endorsed the recommendations and has now decided to release the document to the Nice. And of course, Samara has introduced them sitting with us on the red VIP car. Oh, yes. He's disturbing. He's disturbing. Oh, 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 yes, guys, guys, you know, I came back. It's live television. Are you guys excited? Yes. yes. Oh, that's what I want to hear. That is what I want guys, to hear. Guys, I want to ask you guys something. Hey, has anybody recognized any of you guys? Like, walking down the street, like, oh my god, this guy. Endorse a recommendation that the report be released to the public. The security cluster minister and the Minister of Public Works will conduct a media briefing on Tuesday, the 10th of December. One of the men convicted of murdering a Pretoria mother told the court this morning that Chanel Henning's estranged husband had hired him to kill her. Andre Haus told the North Gauteng High Court that Nico Henning feared that he would not get full custody of their son. Haus said Henning offered him one million rand to order the hit on his wife. Sentencing procedures were delayed when Haus suddenly decided to implicate Nico Henning in the murder. His name was mentioned several times during the two-year-old trial. The state could, however, not produce concrete evidence evidence that Henning was involved. Three other men have since confessed to their role and are currently serving 18-year sentences each behind bars. 26-year-old Chanel Henning was shot dead in Ferry Glen in November 2011 in a drive-by shooting shortly after dropping her son off at a crash. A 35 million rand greening project is one of the oldest in one of the oldest townships rather in the country is complete. The Deputy Minister of Environmental Affairs will hand over the responsibility of maintaining the project to the Mangawo Metro. For more on that story, we are joined on the line by SABC reporter Balisa Matsane. Balisa, thank you so much for your time. Balisa, what difference has the project made to the area? Well, the project has brought a great difference to the area where it is right now, um, this new park. There used to be a wetland and also an illegal dumping site where all sorts of um, rubbish, dead animals, and all sorts of things were dumped there. It used to have a very foul smell, but now it's a beautiful green um, you know, environment with a playground for children as well as live facilities. So it's quite exciting for people in that area because, mm. you know, it's, it's quite a, a, a facelift for that area. Quite exciting, Belisa, but now how does Mango Metro plan to take the project forward? Well, Mango Metro has spoken to the community also just to encourage them to just, you know, make sure that the place stays clean mm -hmm. and also the youth around about relocation have also been involved in terms of keeping an eye on, on the park and making sure that it's actually safe and not vandalized. Mm. So the community is actually quite hyped up because it's it's something that was not there and it's, it's actually a beautiful place to go. Speaking of being hyped up, Balisa, are there any potential jobs to be created or spin-offs from the project? 
Well, currently there's about 300 people um, employed in this particular project. But um, this is the first phase, we are told. A second phase will follow in a third phase. But over time, um, the number of jobs will obviously um, be reduced drastically because mm-hmm. the bulk of the work that had to be done was mm-hmm. in the first cleaning out, clearing out of the area. So the, we've been told that over time there will be about only 10 people that will be permanently employed by the municipality you know, for maintenance and cleaning purposes. But also just to add to that, the municipality also plans to have other parks um, around Malawong um, developed. The, um, a major park will be in Tabanchu. But all in all, the Department of Water Affairs and Environmental Affairs plans to have about 23 other projects mm-hmm. around the free state. These will be to the tune of, um, to, yeah, also a million. Mm-hmm. But listen, now, is there any big economic advantage from any of these projects? It's mostly social um, mm-hmm. at this stage, but also, I mean, in terms of the jobs that have been created, um, definitely, yes, there is a co- an economic benefit because mm-hmm. it's people that d- did not have these jobs. Now, what um, has been done, it's temporary jobs, obviously, mm-hmm. and what's been done is these people have been um, employed over um, um, one year or rather it's one year contract, others and some of them is an 18 month um, contract. But these jobs are actually rotated between community mm-hmm. members. So what would happen is the first group of let's say 300 people would come in and then once their they, um, time expires, mm. then another group would come in giving them also an opportunity um, to get employment even though it's just for one year. Thank you so much. That was ACBC reporter Palisa Matani on the greening project that has finally reached completion in Mangawong. In other news, former Hard Living's gang leader Rashid Stahis Pabo has been revoked. This after he signed up as a member of a newly launched party, the Patriotic Alliance. Stahi was released in September this year after serving 11 years of a 15-year sentence for kidnapping and ordering a rape of a teenager. The Patriotic Alliance, which he joined, is led by former convicts Dayton McKenzie and Kenny Gunene. One of Stahi's bail conditions is that he should not be involved in any gang-related activities. He's currently held at the Polsmo Correctional Center. Correctional Services says the matter is being investigated. Basic Education Minister Angel Motzecha says that Grade 9 is the weak link in the education system. She launched the annual national assessments results in Archridgeville, west of Pretoria. Seven million pupils in grades 1 to 6 and 9 participated in the tests. Tweety, hashtag signal high because after the break, Usa Mora is going to be talking to you with the bad girl in the group. It's got a couple and grade 9 particularly in maths were disappointing. Much more needs to be done to realize the 60% threshold to master the minimum language and mathematics, mathematics competencies by the end of grade 3, 6 and 9. The gap between the rich and poor is the biggest source of division in South Africa. This is according to the South African Reconciliation Barometer released by the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation in Cape Town. The study measures the progress made in reconciliation. Earlier on, we spoke to Kim Well, the project leader. This is what she had to say. Reconciliation only in terms of psychological boundaries. And we imagine that we're all on an equal footing and we just need to get to know each other a bit better. This is an easier concept. But when we realize that reconciliation also speaks to issues of power, inequality, and geographical segregation, then we see the challenge ahead of us. Now, this is a challenge which has a very, very long history. And we've done a lot of the work in reconciliation towards getting to know one another, breaking down um, racial barriers, especially in the middle and upper classes. But the road ahead of us we are facing, the need to break down the class barriers, which are also geographical, which is why we're proposing the concept of radical reconciliation to push us into the next era of reconciliation in South Africa.
the citizenry plays a key role in bringing the country forward and in reconciliation. What is needed is a shift in consciousness. So at the moment, our findings also show that South Africans tend to live in bubbles, tend to live, live and let live, so to speak. But we need to push to the next level of being aware of how other South Africans live, being connected to how they live, and caring about the plight of South Africans. So at the level of citizen consciousness and citizen desire for transformation, we, we still have some way to go in this area. News for now, Zinche is standing by with your weather news.